Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am coming to you from a booth in Panera Bread. So I hope that you can hear me very well. I just headed on out and uh, making sure I get here to you on time. I'm Dr. Helen. I am the host of Where You Are, the Accelerated Healing Detox Bootcamp, as well as the host of the Faith Building Bootcamp, where we build faith one day at a time and health one day at a time. So we are so excited that you are here with us this morning. Please disregard any any outside noises because I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. And I am just, but I'm happy to still be here. So we are on day 23, day 23, guys, day 23. I cannot even believe it. Time goes by so quickly. So we are we are down to just 17 more days in our accelerated healing detox boot camp. And it's like the OJ thing, like, what do you do after it's over? I don't know. But we're going to continue on. We know we're going to continue on. We're going to continue eating foods that are, are nutritious and healthy and delicious all at the same time. And so here on day 23 is where we are. I don't know where you're joining us from. If it's day one, day two, or day 23. But if it's day one, welcome. If it's day two, welcome back. And if it's day 23, look at you because you're still here. We're so excited for you because this is just an exciting time today because we're going to be talking about some really, really fabulous, delicious delicious seeds. I call this topic seasoned seeds because we're going to talk about some seeds that are that are really good at seasoning your food and just like making teas and all, all just absolutely delicious things. But first, we're going to hear from my favorite husband and my favorite artist, Longer Than Forever, John Stoddard. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. My favorite husband, John Stoddard. He happens to be the only one that I have as well, but still my favorite. So guys, day 23, we're making sure you're getting in the bed by 10. I'm talking to myself as well. We're walking squats each side. And listen, I hope you're mastering that because we're gonna, we got something to add to that real soon. And it's coming up. So I need to make sure you are proficient at stepping on each side, 10 sides, or 10 times on each side. So that's about 20 steps that you're going to be taking. And you're being strengthening you're strengthening those lower extremities because we are preventing the falls absolutely your food guys just continue to be creative because we like food to be our medicine and medicine our food and that's what we are here for now just my disclaimer i am a board certified physician in internal medicine and physical medicine and rehabilitation is where i've been trained with additional training in sports medicine non-surgical orthopedics and interventional pain and now lifestyle medicine so i am very well equipped to tell you the information that i bring to you to, to be able to show you from all different sides of what is happening with more than 28 years of experience so i i want you to know that this information information is for educational purposes though this is um this is not going to substitute the sound advice of your primary care physician your primary care provider so make sure you stay in contact with them i would love to be your doctor if you would like that i would too but for right now let's just make sure we stay in contact with your primary care provider because this program is very powerful at lowering your blood sugar levels your blood pressure levels and so you want to make sure particularly 
particularly if you're on per particular medications, that you stay in contact with them in case something has to be altered, adjusted, or removed. So that being said, let's move in. We're continuing to talk about seeds. We talked all about the seeds and we talked all about pesticides and how to get rid of all of these different pesticides and the GMOs, how to know where this where the GMOs are, how to know where they're not, how to know where how to pick organic, how to know not to get how when, when to not get organic, when to get organic. All of those things we've talked about. We talked about hybrids and everything and, to, and we started talking about seeds yesterday. And we're going to talk about some seeds today that are so delicious. Like, you know, it's it's interesting that we have these seeds that can do all of these different things. They're still, remember, have a lot of nutrition inside of the seed, but they also are so tasty. Like these are seeds that I use all the time. And so we're gonna start with cardamom pods. Man, I, cardamom is so delicious. And it has like this kind of a, a like a, a nice little spicy flavor you'll see it like it has like these green husks for the green cardamom pods and then there's some brown ones and they have this husk and you the whole thing is edible and it, what they do is they take this and they they will grind it down and you'll get a, like a seasoning once it's dried you can get a powder form of this and i use it in both powder form and in the full form i like i like that this kind of help is it full of like antioxidants in this little tiny seed there's lots of antioxidants in it it's anti-inflammatory it's effective against like like it, it was found to be more effective for ulcers than ulcer medication okay y'all this is a seed okay so this is this is research and done it helps to fight cancer and it also helps to fight bad breath and let me tell you i tried it the other day because i had eaten some onions and it was like okay uh, yeah, that's that's pretty strong. And so I took one of my cardamom seeds and I chewed on it and in and, and it like just like fresh in my mouth and I noticed it was kind of like a spicy kind of minty-ish kind of flavor that that's really really that's really good and I and and I was noticing that my my breath like it kind of killed like the the odor of it so much so much trust me it was it was better than the, even the toothpaste and then it also helps to fight resistant candida strains have you ever seen like white whitish just you know like a whitish coating on your tongue that's likely candida and many people have candida in their gut we call it we call it small intestinal um, fungal overgrowth that that can actually uh, cause like some GI complaints so this is actually something that's really good for that and so you want to put it in and chew on it. it's really good it also lowers your blood sugar levels last night i also made a tea out of this and some of the other herbs that i'm going to tell you about it and uh, and and it was just tasty my sister came over and i gave it to her she was like she just chugged it all down i really didn't make the whole thing for her but she drank all of it anyway <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good because I like to make sure that her blood pressure is good and her blood sugar is good. So we are good. And, uh, and so she enjoyed it and I loved seeing her drink it. It also helps to promote urination and to remove water that like excess water that builds up in the body. Like, uh, you know, so, so like, for example, like water that may build up around your heart, people that have congestive heart failure, it's really good for that. And you can put it in like some really delicious foods, like some curry dishes and, you know, the people that eat meat, they put it in the meat dishes at beverages. Like I told you, I made a tea out of it. So it's really good. It's one of the, um, one of the, uh, one of the seasonings that they put in, to uh, the, the Indian chai as well. So let's move on to coriander. Coriander is also very tasty. These are smaller seeds and they actually lower blood sugar, they're antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. They lower your blood pressure because they have a diuretic effect. And it's interesting because people that have anxiety can actually lower the anxiety and improve memory. Who doesn't want their memory improved, right? And who doesn't want to be calm? And uh, it, it helps to promote healthy digestion. And some people in, in Iran, they actually use it as an appetite stimulant. But I also like it because not only does it lower your blood pressure and blood sugars, but it can actually fight infections like urinary tract infections. It's very aromatic. It's actually the seed that comes from the cilantro. And you can actually use it in sweet and savory dishes. And one of the vegan fa's that, um, that I like to make has this seasoning in it, the coriander seasoning. And it's, oh my goodness, it's just so good. It's kind of like a, it's a, it's a very... 
I don't know, like, it's hard to describe the flavor, but just suffice it to say that it's good. I li like to like chew on them and just see what that flavor looks like. And I, I got like some floral notes out of it. Um, really, really tasty. Now let's move on to cumin. Now, um, cumin is actually uh, something that is used to help manage diabetes, reduce cholesterol. It helps to boost memory, has anti-cancer um, properties, antibacterial, anti anti-inflammatory. I mean, it just many, many benefits of it. It's thought to aid in weight loss and to improve the symptoms of IBS. And again, we're talking about something that improves our memory. Many years ago, they were using it to treat people with diarrhea. It has anti-cancer properties. Most of this, the cumin is grown in like China and India and the Middle East and in the Mediterranean areas. And it's a very warming kind of sensation when you drink it. Like I make a cup of of cumin tea and it just you know just sweeten it with a little honey or maple syrup and I drink that sometimes I don't put any sweetener in it but it, it it's actually really good especially when it's cold outside because it'll put a warming sensation inside of you it helps to kill harmful bacteria and you know it was used for many centuries as a preservative it has like a you know this warming kind of peppery kind of smoky kind of flavor really good used in like Mexican and Indian cuisines, curries and spice blends. And I like to make like a, a cumin rice out of it. And it's really, um, really very tasty because, you know, it's helping to manage all of those different things. And so when we talk about fenugreek, our next seasoned season, this one actually has a pretty strong like maple kind of flavor, but it is something that I used when I was nursing my kids. I nursed them for each one of them um, for until they until they bit me and then they I, that was it stop. But um, <laughs> that, that 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 was pretty good. So it was probably about a, maybe a little less than a year or a little more than a year depending. But but I drank fenugreek tea and my husband used to tease me and call me Safeway. He lived in Maryland at the time and he used to call me Safeway because I produced so much milk. So it really is good for producing your milk supply. It was almost like a dispenser. And then it lowers your blood pressure, lowers your blood sugar. It actually improves your hormone level, kind of improves the sex life. That's not a bad thing. It actually decreases menstrual cramps and aids. It may, it may aid in people with, a, with an enlarged prostate but a little bit more research needs to be done on that one does it does seem to lower cholesterol and help to manage your weight and keep your blood flowing properly right so that there's not clots in your blood because we know that those are things that can actually cause issues so aside from in lowering your blood pressure and lowering your blood sugar levels it is like a very good thing. I also used it in my hair. It actually helps with strengthening your hair shaft and increasing the shine on your hair. It has protein in it, about three grams of protein in every tablespoon of it. And some places it's used as a thickening agent in shampoo and um, in, in soap. It's very high in fiber. Uh, it lowers your triglycerides too. Not only your like the total cholesterol, but sometimes we need to lower the triglycerides as well. And this is a good, a good uh, seasoned season to do that with. And I like this, you know, this doll recipe, which is like a, this is, if y'all know about the story about Jacob and Esau, it was a lentil soup that um, that Esau served, um, sold his birthright for. And this one is a lentil soup. That's what doll is. And so that um, it uses this fenugreek and so many other of these aromatic seasonings in it. So delicious, y'all. Just so good. If y'all like Indian food, you've had it before. Now, mustard seeds are another one that is very good. It actually is, is for cancer prevention, but it also helps with migraines. You know, it doesn't, you know, it, this is what is used to make mustard and then they add vinegar to it and things of that nature to add to make the mustard. But the mustard seed even by itself is amazing. And the seeds are really, really tiny. But what's interesting is that when you plant a mustard seed, the mustard tree grows to like the largest tree in your garden. Even that little, little tiny seed, it sounds like like something we didn't talk about but reducing the migraines supporting your heart health strengthening your bones you know it helps to delay aid the aging process it benefits from your skin you know the benefits for skin and hair as well um, it's 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 controlling your blood sugar and lowers the bad cholesterol it's really really good it kind of has 
a, a slightly nutty nutty flavor to it and it and it's very popular in Indian cuisine so that 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 you know lots of Indian dishes you've definitely had it in there and I like to use the these it in this potato dish that's really really good it's packed with magnesium that's actually how it helps to look to um, decrease your headaches because magnesium is a relaxing a uh, relaxing mineral so it's packed with that in there it's very high in fiber so it's good for your heart and for your bones to make your bones stronger to strengthen your nails your hair and your teeth and the seeds actually hydrate the skin as well so it's a nice tasty way to enjoy it and star anise i don't know if you guys have seen star anise before but it's such a beautiful little seasoning i just think god is so creative like doing all these different types of seasons like who would have thought to like make a seasoning that looks like a star it's really delicious it has kind of a, a similar to like fennel um, but I think you guys have tried um, fennel now because we had it as one of our in one of our salads during the first parts of our detox we we use fennel in one of our smoothies I'm sorry um, we, we we had it was it in the juice that we used it and so it has kind of a slight licorice -y kind of flavor but not really licorice kind of a floral licorice I don't know it very very tasty and you can you know what I like about it is it's antioxidants anti-inflammatory it fights um, bacteria funguses and viruses it's really kind of good for urinary tract infections again it lowers your blood sugar levels and um, and it, it helps with a digestion and you know that this is actually one of the ingredients that's in Tamiflu that helps to fight the influenza virus. So they use the star anise and because they've been sourcing it, it's making the price of the star anise go up. I used to pay like a dollar, a dollar twenty for it and now it's like five dollars or something. And my sister was telling me about that yesterday. She just got some star anise from the farmer's market in Atlanta and even there, which is usually cheaper, has gone up a little bit. But I also, you can also get it from Indian stores, like Indian or ethnic stores and they don't seem to be quite as pricey. Um, it actually may treat um, herpes simplex as well. And, um, and you know, when, when we're fighting or treating people for this, um, this CFO that we talked about before, that small intestinal fungal overgrowth, we can actually use star anise to kind of break up what's this, this protective coating that the fungus will put up so that you can't get to it. The star anise will kind of help break that down. Now I put this in my rice too, like I made this rice and I just put star anise, one bay leaf and some garlic and salt in it, man. It just, it just put all of this delicious flavor inside of the rice. So incredibly good. And, um, and then we're going to talk about cinnamon. And, um, and cinnamon actually is really tasty too. I, you know, it's very interesting that cinnamon actually comes from like the bark of a tree, uh, of the cinnamon tree, and it's ex extracted and the woody parts are removed. And then they use that cinnamon when you, they use the, the pieces. And when you dry it out, it kind of looks like that. And this is what they use to grind it up to make like the powder that you're accustomed to, to using. It is antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, protects against heart disease, lowers your cholesterol, the LDL, like the total cholesterol, the hot, the bad cholesterol, the LDL, as well as the triglycerides. It also lowers your blood sugar, so you'll have a lower hemoglobin A1C, and it improves insulin sensitivity, which is what we've been trying to do. Um, and then it, it reduces your risk of heart disease, it fights cancer, it fights, you know, may pre actually prevent bacterial and fungal infections, and it's also antiviral. You can actually use it to prevent tooth decay and reduce bad breath too, y'all. Come on. There are some people, you know, people have church breath. You kind of want to give them a little cinnamon stick or something. But yeah, this is what you can do. Like carry some cardamom and, and a little cinnamon and just say, hey, would you like some cinnamon? Um, so yeah, that, that's what we do. But listen, it's so good. There's like two different types of the cinnamon. There's like a Ceylon cinnamon, cinnamon and a cassia cinnamon. And in this, the Ceylon cinnamon is kind of what you know as the true cinnamon. And then the cassia is the one that that uh, generally refers to as cinnamon. And this one, this kind of brand, if you eat way too much of it, you, you, know, you can start to, it has something called coumarin in it. You probably heard of coumadin. So it has kind of the same kind of effect. So it can be kind of harmful in large doses to thin, it may thin your blood a little bit too much. The Ceylon has, is a lower coumarin, but really in the in the types that we're typically cooking in with 
seasoning our food with it. That's not going to happen no matter which one you do. Um, I was really trying to like when you do like really heavy doses of it. And so I like to, you know, I like pancakes. And so I will put like the cinnamon in pancakes and then I'll do and I'll do like this apple compote on top. So I'll look, do like fresh apples and chop them up and then put in some cinnamon. And I like to put in some of the other seasonings that we talked about, maybe a little star anise maybe a little coriander and put that in there and then sweet, you know, like let it, let it turn into a, like a little bit of a syrup because that all of the syrup, all the sweetness out of the apples will come into the syrup. And then you can actually use a little bit of thickener, a thickening agent to thicken up so that it's like a syrup. And then I'll use this instead of using maple syrup, even because I made it from my own my own apples and I'm using extracting the sugar from the apples to make my syrup out of it. So absolutely delicious. Now, as you can see, I was talking really fast and going through all of these different seasonings. I have a lot more seasonings to talk about that I want us to start incorporating into our food. And knowing that when we're doing this, we're actually increasing our anti-inflammatory effect. We're, 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 we're bombarding ourselves with antioxidants that are going to fight the inflammation. We're also lowering our blood sugar levels. And don't worry, it's, it, uh, you know, it's not if you are just if you're not on any medications it's just going to keep your blood sugars normal so it's not going to lower your blood sugar too low so that you end up being hypoglycemic it doesn't do that the the one thing that you'll have to be careful of is if you on medications that are that are anti-diabetic medications, then it will potentiate the effect of your medication. So that's when we're talking about making sure your doctor knows what you're doing because you may have to change some of the medications or you can let me know if you're one of my, if you're one of my, um, one of my clients, just let me know and we can, we can adjust the medication as we bring you on to lower your, to, to lower your medication requirements. Because really that's my goal is for your body to do what it's supposed to do on its own without medications, right? Because your body is not screaming, I need metformin. Like it never did that. Like in the beginning, God did not create, you know, a medication. He didn't create a medication. He created our systems to do what our systems are supposed to do. And I am just here to help potentiate that and to make it work properly. So as we are ending, I just want you to um, get your questions ready. Make sure you put a Q in the, in the, in the, Q and a colon in the chat box. So I'll know it's a question. And uh, as we talk about seeds, I just have a few more seeds that I want to bring to your attention. Some that you may have heard of or may not have heard of. So we're going to continue to talk about that tomorrow as we now entertain your questions. Yes. Okay. So which kind of rice is best? What kind of rice is best? And, you know, we're talking about, uh, we, we, we talked about rice the other day, uh, which is very similar to like the wheat grain where you have an outer, an outer portion, then you have an inner portion, and then you have the innermost portion. The, the, the white rice is the innermost portion of the rice, right? That's like the endosperm that's inside of the rice. And so the, the, the bran has been removed when, when you eat the white rice. And so what you'll notice is that I'm not saying there's anything wrong with eating white rice, but if you're diabetic or if you have problems maintaining your blood sugar levels, you'll notice that because there's no fiber on it, your blood sugar levels will go up faster right it'll go up faster when you eat brown rice it has the fiber on it so it's going to release the sugar very slowly and more at a steady pace and so it's going to slowly increase the blood sugar levels now the absolute best rice to eat is wild rice which is kind of black rice it's actually the best one it doesn't have you know it's 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 a it's got a lot healthier profile but after that is brown rice and then white rice is is the the order that i do it so that doesn't mean that i don't eat white rice sometimes i when i go to restaurants i ask for brown rice and if they don't i know they're not going to have wild rice but if they um if they have um 
if, if, if they have brown rice, I will prefer, I'll ask them, do you have brown rice? If they have brown rice, I'll pay my dollar and get brown rice to get to get the to get the brown rice instead of the white rice. It's just my preference. I think brown rice sticks with you a little bit more because of the fiber, so you're fuller longer, and it has a it has a a, a better bite to it. As, as I'm so used to brown rice now that white rice really kind of is disappointing to me. So I don't um, I don't buy white rice, but I do buy I'll do, do brown basmati rice. I'll do brown. Uh, long grain rice, different types of them. I always use my, I always get organic and I go to Costco and get that big bag of, of rice that's organic and non-GMO and all the good stuff on it. But I also want to make sure that I always rinse my rice and I rinse my rice at least three times to get all of the, you know, extra, any, any, um, any arsenic from the soil or arsenic that's on it. I want to rinse all of that off. So I'll get it off. And I'm also trying to make sure that it's not starchy. So I'll rinse it at least three times and I want the water Water to kind of run clear and then I'll cook with the rice. I also like, this is just a cooking tip, I like to dry saute. My big sister Janice taught me how to do this is you dry salt, like we used to, she used to saute it just the rice first and then like you know, we were, this is when we were eating white rice and she would saute it first and then it would make the kernels stay firmer. So I tried that same technique with the brown rice. And so I dry saute it. I don't put it in any oil. I just dry saute it. So I'm putting it in the pan like over medium heat and kind of stirring it around and it kind of makes the kernels tighten up so that when I put my water in it and boil, it doesn't turn into that fat, mushy kind of rice that nobody, that the reason that I didn't like brown, brown rice years ago, it kind of keeps the kernels a little tighter and, and it's, it's more palatable and I much, I enjoy it much more that way. Now, I just researched Amu Amu is the best juicer. Uh, okay, I I I have a, that is a juicer. One of the the juicer that I have is like spectacular, um, and um, it's called a Nama J two, and it really pulls out all of the juices. Um, and and so like I used a Brazil juicer before, and there was so much juice left that and and, and my pulp was really wet. And I took pictures of it because there was so much juice that I wasted because it was like I had to strain it and get more juice out of it. And I would have wasted all of that juice. And when I got this one, it makes the pulp so dry that it's almost like, it's almost like hay. I mean, it's, it, some of the pulps come out so dry because it really squeezes all the juice out. So I'm very happy with mine. I'm glad you found one that you like as well. Now, um, Billy has a question. Is Boathouse Farms a good juice to buy? Evolution, naked, simple truth. Alrighty. So here's the here's the lowdown on that. When you are juicing, if you don't have a juicer, then you got to do what you have to do. I've, some of the some of the the boathouse and evolution, those ones are, are uh, out of all of those. I think it's the evolution that I preferred um, or the suja. I, I preferred those because they are all natural ingredients. Sometimes that some of the other ones like they'll add like a lot of a lot of sugary fruits at one time and less of the greens so you're getting more sugar instead of the instead of the detoxification of the greens and so i will tend to kind of look for those and so i'm one i want my ingredients to not have anything added naked smoothies were so sweet to me that i couldn't i it, it just couldn't i couldn't tolerate it so uh, we used to buy that when the kids were growing up and then it somehow it seemed like it got sweeter, either that or our taste changed. And even my kids were saying that it was too sweet. So we stopped purchasing that one. Sometimes we would purchase the Boathouse one. And as long as you just read the ingredients and just kind of compare on their sugar content, you want more of the non-sugary foods than you do the sugary foods. So I hope that answers your question. Um, my juicer is called a Nama J2. And where do you purchase fenugreek? Fenugreek is actually in the uh, Indian stores. You can purchase it. You can 
Uh, and, and I find it's actually a lot cheaper there because that's something that they use as a seasoning all the time. And, and I buy them in like these bags and some of the bulk stores, you can buy them in, in bulk. I think you can buy them at Sprouts in bulk and White Whole Foods in bulk. Um, but I'd, I'd like to get mine from the Indian store because I get a whole lot more and I can use it. That way, one of the things that I can do with it, and my one of my sisters um, introduced me to this, is you actually take some of the fenugreek and you pour water over it and let the fenugreek sit in the water for like 24 hours. And then you drink the water and it actually helps inside. So all of those benefits that we talked about, you can actually drink it in water form because the fenugreek nutrition has kind of um, seeped into the water. The other thing that you can do is you can take the fenugreek water and use it for your hair and so that's um that's really good um somebody says that the cow farmers market has it and yes many of those kinds of stores the co-ops the farmers you know the kind of the farmer co-op kind of places they will tend to have it as well i know there's one in Asheville that we went to that was a, a co-op and they had like everything in in there so um so that one that one's really very good so yeah so the that is the juicer that i use i don't see any other questions i i know that there if you are having any problems with urinary tract infections we gave you some good information today on some of the seasonings that you can add to your um your food and you're just gonna cook with these seasonings like you don't have to like go buy them as a as a um as a as a supplement or any of that kind of stuff just cook with it you know you take take your foods and you're gonna see um after this whole thing is over i'm gonna if you, if you would like to stay on my mailing list i'm gonna send out recipes like maybe one or two a week and i'll just introduce these different seasonings and the ways that you can cook them in addition i have on my youtube channel there's a whole series of recipes uh, of, of, of videos, cooking videos. I did a series at 3ABN, a, a radio station, a Christian radio station in Illinois, and there are 12 episodes. And on, on each one of the episodes, we do about three recipes on each one. And so you'll find that many of the um, of the foods that we talk about are on that on those stations. Like we have a show that we just talk about turmeric and how to use turmeric. So it's called Turmeric Time. And then uh, I have a book that is accompanying that, that actually has all the recipes in written form and that you can actually use to get to follow along with what you see on the video. And so that one's called our Reverse It Cookbook. And we have it in digital form. And I'll, I think I'll have it ready for next week um, that if anybody um, would like to, as we go into interval four, we're going to be doing more of those recipes. So I think you might benefit from, um, from using that. Some people like to have a book to see and so they can see what's written down and other people are like more savvy and they're just, they can do it. Like I'm not, I'm so old fashioned. I like a book. I want to be able to turn a page. So that's why I wrote this book, which is the accelerated healing, um, which is, which is what I use for the accelerated healing detox is this book here. <laughs> there we go. I can't take my finger. So that's my reverse it book. And the reverse it book is how to reverse type two diabetes and other chronic illnesses. And this one, which is our uh, workbook. And then we have our power pack. So remember to, to meet with us every day. Here we go. Meet, remember to meet with us every day at 6 a.m. for our faith building boot camp, 6 a.m. Central Time. And we meet every day at 8 a.m. for our accelerated healing detox boot camp, which is where you are right now. Make sure you invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, your enemies. And remember yesterday, your enemies might be your enemies because they're so unhealthy that they're just angry all the time time. So maybe if you invite them, they'll learn some things and, and kind of figure out how to make themselves a little healthier and then they'll be nicer to you. And so maybe don't forget your enemies. Hey, if somebody comes up to you and they're like, you know what? I don't like you. I'm like, you know what? I got a video for you. Maybe your gut health needs to be taken care of. So you I, go watch these videos. So when you go to the videos, remember to like, comment and subscribe again just share your videos like comment and subscribe i know you took notes today but if you missed anything because i know i was talking very quickly because i'm trying to keep it in the 30 minutes but go and re rewind and review it so that you can see so you can make sure you get your notes right and you know all of the videos that you um, uh, use all these videos so that you can get the information and you know what you're doing when you're navigating through the grocery store because you believe 
that health is the new currency. And I do too. We believe it. We're like-minded. So we believe that health is a new currency and we're spending ours wisely. Thank you. You are spending yours wisely too. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. See you next time.